Hello, my name is Jordan, aka Sentinel the First, and by aka, I mean I occasionally call myself that on the internet. I know a few things about a few things. Hopefully the first of many tutorials on those things. Um, I realized that a lot of them are not really the most easy things, and there might be some uh, guidance that I can give to get people going on the right path. Today we're going to focus on this one, starting from the most basic of basic things that programmers will need to use day to day. Knowing STEM isn't necessarily known for being the most accessible of all uh, fields. Uh, and on top of that, it's, uh, it's really difficult. And I don't say that as like, this is hard to try to like dismay you from from like getting into computer science and things like that and programming. I'm saying that as like, it, it took like four years for someone to tell me this in school, but you're not gonna ace everything in this topic. It's hard. So I mean, even 99 out of 100 people are not gonna get all A's and B's in it. That's what I mean. You might fail a class. You might fail multiple classes. You might fail multiple classes multiple times. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm immune to this. I've done it, my, I did it myself. I, there were classes that gave me a hard time and I just went through them. As, as someone who has gone through a computer science program in the past, um, I know what it's like to look for help online with these topics. Uh, I know that you're just as likely to find something good and current as you are to find something that looks like it was filmed in 144p and spoken into like a trash can. Like I said, it's not the most accessible. But uh, let's just jump in. So what is a text editor? So text editors are important for every programmer, uh, regardless of what language you're using or what the end goal of your project is. It doesn't matter if you're coding in Python or C or HTML, it, it's, you're going to be doing it in a text editor of some sort. Uh, whether that's an IDE or an actual basic text editor, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're the answer to the question you will undoubtedly get uh, of how do you write a program? How do you write code? How do you write a website? Um, that, that sort of thing. Text editors are where you will actually write the program. Computer science is an interesting field. It often belongs to either math departments or, in my case, engineering departments, uh, and it has the word science in it. So which of those does it belong to? Um, all of them, and also none of them. Let me explain. Of course, it shares the things with all of these departments, um, but it doesn't necessarily neatly fit into any one of them. In my personal opinion, this is all my opinion, who am I kidding? Computer science shares a lot with a field that you might actually not expect. Linguistics. Stay with me. Languages, uh, written or spoken, often have rules to convey meaning at a very basic level. They use things like semantics, syntax, dictionaries, symbols. Same with programming. Similar to things like subject-verb agreement, programming languages follow a lot of similar principles. All we're doing, all programmers and coders are doing, is something that down the road can be read and executed by a computer. And there's a reason I said down the road. What I'm showing on screen now is a very, very simple example of a C++ program. It's a function called main that just returns zero. That's it. It doesn't really print anything out to the screen. It just returns zero. That's all. And while you might look at this and say, oh, hey, we wrote a, something that a computer can read. And that's kind of the tone that you get from a lot of media and people that are talking is, oh, you're writing computer code that can be read by a computer. But that's not really the case, unfortunately. There are more parts to the workflow than, than you would initially think. Languages like Java, C, Python are all what are called high-level programming languages. And all this really means is that they're relatively human readable, not necessarily computer readable. So for example, I am an English speaker somewhat fluently. And if I had a friend who spoke Chinese, I wouldn't be able to write a recipe to bake a cake and then give it to him and have him immediately know how to bake a cake 
because it's in a different language that he doesn't really understand. What needs to be done is it needs to be given to a translator who would then translate it to Chinese. So that's kind of the way that it works with programming and computer code. We write one of these programs in a high level programming language in a text editor, and then we feed it to something called a compiler or an interpreter, which then turns it into something that the computer can read. Trust me, you don't really want to look at the files that it's creating for the computer to read because they're terrifying. And unless you're writing a compiler yourself, you don't really need to. <laughs> So text editors are really everywhere. Macs have text edit, Windows has Notepad, Linux has any number of text editors, depending on the distribution, that can all be run through a uh, command line. And these sort of IDEs and text editors often fall on what I like to call the nano to code spectrum of difficulty and usability. So the first one I wanna talk about is nano. Nano is quite possibly the most basic you can get with a text editor. It is quite literally just editing text. That is it. You can't even move your mouse around. You will be pressing page up and page down and your arrow keys a lot. This is what's called a command line text editor, so it's run through the command line. That's probably a topic for another video, if I'm being completely honest with myself. Um, if I tried to dive into what a shell is and what a command line is in this one, I feel like I might get a little bit uh, distracted. All you need to do is have a terminal. Uh, if you're on Mac, it's just a, it's just called terminal, I believe. Uh, Linux, same thing. On Windows, it's a little bit trickier because Nano doesn't come in things like command prompt. What I would recommend is using um, Ubuntu for Windows. It's an app from the Windows Store, and you can download it and just run a Linux shell in Windows. I'll explain what everything is in probably another video. I hate to do that to you. Uh, all I all I want to say is that is a way to run Nano. Uh, Nano is very basic. It is the most basic. A lot of uh, computer science programs will start you here. I, for one, had professors in like 500 level classes who were like, who would swear by Nano and not use anything else. That is what they used. And it's kind of, uh, I mean, I kind of get what they're, where they're coming from. It is the easiest to use. It is the quickest to use. It is the lightest weight program. So like some of the, the ones we'll talk about later use a lot of processing power and memory to run, but Nano doesn't require much at all. These will probably be the ones you'll use first, either by requirement or necessity when you start programming. I have a uh, command line text editor on my phone that I can run in like 10 seconds. I don't know if you can see that. I have Nano on my on my phone. Next on that list is what is called Notepad. And Notepad has a couple equivalents um, on things like Linux and Mac. Notepad is like very famous for being uh, a, the bundled text editor with Windows. Very simple, about as simple as Nano, except for it has a more usable interface. It, it's not run through the command line, it's actually a program. And you can use your mouse. Thank goodness. About as basic as it gets for an actual program not running through the command line. And then one step up from Notepad, we have Notepad++, which plus plus you will learn is uh, code in, in most programming languages. Plus plus is uh, used for incrementing variables. So adding one to something. Um, so it's usually used for that to describe like a second version of something. Um, so Notepad++ plus plus is Notepad, but more. Um, it has various features that Notepad doesn't, like highlighting uh, text or uh, uh, code highlighting. Uh, so it highlights the different parts of the code that you're writing. It highlights a variable name versus the type, that sort of thing. You can also download different packages for Notepad++ and different like add-ins and mods. One of my favorites is the compare tool. Uh, it lets you open up two documents and highlight the differences between the two. Not as fun for programmers, but it's really useful uh, day to day. Notepad++ uh, is still very lightweight, like all of the, the ones that have come before this, um, but is a bit bigger <laughs> and has a bit more customizability because you can add things to it and you can add macros and you can 
add different languages and it will detect what kind of language you're writing in and it will actually assist with that. It'll give you different highlights depending on what language you're writing in, like writing HTML versus writing CSS versus writing C++. It'll highlight different things. And it's honestly probably the gold standard for most programmers because it does whatever they need them to do, need it to do, while not being super heavyweight. Next on that list is Atom. Atom is my personal favorite text editor. It's the one I use for everything and have been using. I used for the past three years of school and use it every day uh, in work. This isn't as big still as things that are further down the list, but they're way bigger than things like Nano or Notepad or Notepad++ even. It's a little bit more resource intensive, so you're not gonna wanna use this really on uh, some crappy laptop that you're just using to code. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using this because it'll hog up resources and probably run kind of slow. It's It has infinitely more features than something like Notepad or Nano. Much more complete. And it's much closer to something called an IDE. An IDE is something called an integrated development environment. It is supposedly everything that you need to develop full-fledged apps and things like that. Atom here, it has uh, directories, language selection, extensions, plugins, some of the same stuff that you found in Notepad++. The fun color change thing where depending on what language you're choosing, it assists with it. And it will actually do some pretty cool stuff involving the actual writing of the program. So if you have a function that's defined earlier and you're writing the uh, like a, a function call, it will often complete it with the name of the function. So you don't have to worry as much about misspelling function names or variable names and things like that. It'll actually auto-corrects it for you. It also has Git connections, which also deserves its own video, as much as I hate it. And then the final thing on this list is something called Visual Studio Code. This is probably the thing you see stock photos of programmers coding in the most. <laughs> it is kind of the industry standard for like professional development. This is what's called an IDE. I think I mentioned it earlier a little bit. It supposedly includes everything that you need to actually do full-fledged software development. It has a compiler of its own. It has a command line of its own. It has a debugger of its own, which is amazing if you can actually use it. It has everything you could possibly need, really. However, <laughs> drawbacks of this one, it is huge. Bigger than Atom, bigger than Notepad++, and that's just out of the gate. That's not installing any special things for various languages. That's not installing special stuff to help you code on for Android or iOS, not including any of that stuff. Just the base install. It does a lot, but it requires a lot. Editing Jordan here, I just wanted to check in and say that past me forgot about a couple things. The main thing being that there are also online versions of IDEs that you can also use. These aren't really good for long-term projects or things that will require a lot of input because these might have uh, subscription or paid versions that are required to use their full potential. The three of these I wanted to mention are Code Sandbox, Jupyter Notebooks, which is good for Python mostly, and my personal favorite, REPL. REPL gives an assortment of options for coding languages. REPL gives you an easy to use thing to actually look at your code and then run it. Again, I would just recommend using these for testing and learning about things, not necessarily for projects or work and that sort of thing. That brings me to the kind of the final point of this uh, video. Which of these should you choose? Which of these should you put your time into and code into and use for all of your projects and your school and what which one of these are you going to take with you for the next however many years and my answer to that is just kind of i know some people were probably wanting a concrete surefire answer to that but it i i don't really feel comfortable doing that there are a lot of reasons to program using 
any of these tools. And it all comes down to a few things, including personal preference, project type, and experience. Uh, since this isn't really a video for people who are super experienced programmers already in a job of software development, that last one shouldn't really come into play. Should you be using Nano to program an entire application for a group project? Probably not. You could but it would be rough. Just imagine using page up and page down to go through 5,000 lines of code. Uh, should you use Visual Studio Code to program a Hello World program? I mean, you could, but you probably shouldn't. Uh, that would be a little bit be like going for your driving instruction test and coming up with a an SSC to a Tara to do it. Could it get the job done? Yes. Would it be wholeheartedly unnecessary? Yes, it also would do that. It also depends on your situation. Sometimes schools or businesses will actually require you to use a certain tool. I had to use uh, Nano for my first projects in my first few classes uh, in school because that's how we turned in our projects. And lastly, and most importantly, really, it depends on how you learn. Um, I know that sounds super vague, but some people would really love to have code right from the beginning, uh, to write their first programs in code and have access to everything they could possibly need for coding projects and learn from there. I personally am not like that. I see, and in fact, this did happen a couple times, I see the overwhelming features and code and all of the stuff that's in it and I get kind of just my eyes glaze over and I don't really know what I'm looking at. If I have access to everything, I am not going to learn what I need those things for, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. When I went to school, we started in Nano and then we were never really given any guidance on what we should use next. There were people in my compilers class, the last class we take, using Nano, including our professor. <laughs> was that the easiest? I don't think it would have been. I didn't use Nano. I, I used Atom, but it was doable. And that's what I, what I mean, like everyone learns differently. Some people like that progression. It's like a, in a video game. You don't like starting with the best equipment in the game usually you want to have that uh, progression, like to learn how to play the game as you go until you're at the high level where you can actually use it and use it well. And I still use Atom day to day because I don't really need anything more than that. So you may stop at some point on that path and just stay there because it's your comfort zone. And that's totally fine. It's great. When it comes down to it, it's up to you to pick one of these over the other. Um, and if you get discouraged or intimidated or confused, don't give up and think that coding isn't for you or that you're not good enough for it. I did that a couple times. Give a different one a shot. Get, go back to Nano and start from your roots. Figure out what works best for you. And that's about it. That's about all there is to text editors. That's what they are. Um, it's been a while since I've done this sort of thing. I used to do try to do... <laughs> YouTube videos, uh, but uh, like they were mostly Let's Plays and I realized I'm not very good at certain video games and I'm also not very funny. So uh, if you're wanting something like a tutorial, another tutorial like this, uh, or one of those topics that I mentioned, I'll put them up here again. I would love to get into them and try to actually work with them and make something out of them um, and help people along journeys that I may have been on at some point uh, or learn a new skill. If you if you want a tutorial about something on that list, let me know, comment, send me a tweet or something. I stream on Twitch, I try to stream on Twitch every week. So drop by and I really don't care if you derail the game, I'll just talk to you about whatever for a while if need be. Uh, I enjoy that just as much. If I can make sure when you get thrown in the deep end of one of these topics, you have at least like a floaty noodle or something. So yeah, thanks.